Hi, welcome to the video on drawing Lewis dot structures of covalent molecules. We've already seen how to draw Lewis dot structures of ionic compounds, which are the ones made typically of from metals and nonmetals. And there's a transfer of electrons when the bonds are formed in ionic compounds. For covalents, these are made with nonmetal atoms only, and electrons are shared in covalent bonds. So let's take a look at the four steps for drawing Lewis dot structures of covalent molecules. They're quite different from ionic. The first step is to calculate the total number of valence electrons. The second step is to draw the skeletal structure. The third step is to use the remaining valence electrons to give every atom that needs an octet an octet. And the last step is to check your structure, making sure every atom has an octet and you wanna draw the best structure where formal charges are reduced. So we're going to walk through these steps with these three ex examples. So let's start with the first one. In the first example, we're given the chemical formula PF3, which is phosphorus trifluoride, and we're asked to draw the Lewis dot structure. So step one is to calculate the total number of valence electrons. I've already done that for you, but I just want to remind you how we, we do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look in our periodic table, and we're going to find phosphorus. And we can tell by the group that it's in how many valence electrons it has. So remember, phosphorus would have one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. So since it's in group 15, it has five. Remember, we skipped the transition metals. And then the fluorine, it's in group 17, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So fluorines have seven. So each phosphorus, is only one of them has five, and the fluorines have seven. There's three of them, so five plus three times seven is 26 electrons, and I drew those as dots. The next step is to draw the skeletal structure. The way that you draw the skeletal structure is you are going to pick a, an atom to be your central atom, that one's going to go in the center, and you're going to attach all the other atoms to it with single bonds. Typically the central atom will be written first, so that makes it easy, so we would put phosphorus in the center, but it'll also be the one that's the least electronegative. So let's add that. least electronegative, and written first. Usually that's how we tell. You want to, your default is least electronegative, but it's again usually the one that's written first. Um, of course, there, the exception is hydrogen can never be a central atom since it can only form one bond. But with that being said, we're going to put phosphorus, which is the least electronegative, and it's written first in the center, and then we're going to attach to that the three fluorines with single bonds. Now when we did that, we've used, each bond remember has two electrons, we've used up two, four, six electrons. So we used up six electrons. That means that we've, of the 26 electrons, there's 26 dots written here, we now only have 20 left. We only have 20 remaining. So what we're going to do is use our remaining 20 electrons to give every atom that needs an octet an octet. I'm going to redraw the skeletal structure just so we can see what that process looks like step by step. So remember an octet is the atom having eight electrons around it or four pairs of electrons. And since these electrons are sharing, since the atoms are sharing electrons in a covalent bond, then we'll just count, we will count electrons that are in the bond for both the phosphorus and for the fluorine. So let's start with the phosphorus here. The phosphorus has two, four, six electrons around it because it has three bonds, each bond having two electrons touching it. So it has six electrons around it. That means it only needs two more. So the phosphorus would need two more. The fluorines, on the other hand, each fluorine has only one bond touching it, so that means they only have two electrons around it, so each one would need six. So the fluorines would need six, and the phosphorus uh, will need two. And those, those are my 20, so let's see how that works. I'll give my fluorines 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and then I'll give my phosphorus the last two, 20. And these dots that we put around it are called lone pairs. So I had 20 electrons remaining, and I needed 20 electrons to give every atom an octet, and so that's the reason why this structure has all single bonds. Now the last step is to check to make sure the structure looks right. Every atom has an octet that needs one. 
Um, when I and the reason why I said need to one is because remember hydrogen only forms one bond, it needs two electrons around it, and actually boron's okay with with six electrons. So if I take a look at the structure, the phosphorus has an octet; it has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. The fluorines also have an octet: two, four, six, eight. And if I wanted to calculate the formal charges here, what I do is I look at the sort of the number of valence electrons that each atom has so for example phosphorus has five valence electrons because it's in group 15 and I count the number of electrons that are um, that it kind of has in this Lewis dot structure the difference is with formal charges when I count them you're going to count the bonds as one not as a pair so kind of think of it even though the phosphorus and fluorine are sharing this food the phosphorus is only eating um, half of that food. And so uh, with formal charges only, that's when I kind of count the bonds as I sort of split the electrons in the bonds. So this phosphorus has one, two, three, four, five electrons around it. It had five valence electrons. So then it has a formal charge of zero. And that's what we want. We want formal charges to be zero. We'll talk more about formal charges later, but that's just part of the check. The key check I want you to do now is just to make sure you know that they have an octet. Let's look at our next example. So the next example is CH2O, that is formaldehyde. And with that being said, we start off always by figuring out the total number of valence electrons. Uh, carbon's in group 14, it has four valence electrons. Hydrogen's in group one, and there are two of them. So two times one is two. And then you have six from the oxygen. So we have four plus two plus six, it gives us 12. And I drew those 12 electrons here. Next up is our skeletal structure. Pick the one that will go in the center. So you may be thinking hydrogen is the least electronegative, it should go in the center, but remember hydrogens can never go in the center. So the one that's going to go in the center here is the carbon. So I put that in the center, and then I'm going to attach all the other atoms to it with single bonds. So there are two hydrogens, each of those get attached with a single bond to the carbon, and there's one oxygen, and that gets attached with a single bond. Now let's see how many electrons I've used uh, to make my skeletal structure. Two, four, six. Each bond has two electrons, remember? So six electrons. I started off with 12. That means, since I've used up six, I only have six remaining. So now I look at my structure. I'm going to redraw it down here just so we can see it step by step. And I have to figure out how many electrons do, does each thing need to get an octet. Remember, hydrogens only need a pair of electrons or one bond attached to them because they're in the first period there. So they're good. My oxygen, on the other hand, it only has two electrons. So I, it needs two, four, six electrons around it, right? It needs, the oxygen would need six. And my carbon would need two as well. Well, my oxygen needs six, my carbon needs two. That means in this structure, I need a total of eight electrons but I only have six remaining. So let's see what happens in this case. What you're gonna do is you're always gonna start by adding the electrons to the terminal atoms, the ones on the outside, okay? And then, as in this case, well, this carbon, I've used up the six I have remaining, but the carbon still doesn't have an octet. You're gonna take, these two dots are called lone pairs, and you're gonna move those lone pairs in between the two atoms. So now we're gonna get this as our structure. My oxygen has one, two lone pairs, so two lone pairs, and one of the lone pairs that was on the oxygen now becomes a double bond with the carbon. And now all of the atoms here have an octet that need one. So if we count for the oxygen, it's two, four, six, eight, because these two bonds are touching the oxygen. If I count for the carbon, it's two, four, six, eight. You're touching all, you count all of the electrons that are touching that carbon. And so this one in this structure, everything that needs an octet has it. And again, we'll look at formal charges later, but um, in this structure, the formal charges for each, for the oxygen, the carbon, and the hydrogen are, are zero, which is what we like. Last example here, we're going to do PO3 minus. So this is phosphite. Phosphite is a polyatomic ion. If you look at phosphite, it has one phosphorus, which is in group 15, so that's five valence electrons. Three oxygens, and that's, they're in group 16, so they have six valence electrons. 
and we have a three minus charge. If you have a negative charge, what that tells you is that this ion has additional electrons. Remember, electrons are negative, so if the charge is negative, then you have more electrons than you started off with. So what we do when we have a negative charge, as it says here, if it's an anion, which means it has a negative charge, you have to add the electrons. Since it has a three minus charge, we have to add three to the overall total valence electrons. And that will give us a total of 26. So here are my 26 electrons. So now I'll do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna start with my central atom, which is phosphorus, since it's the least electronegative. And it's also, again, it's written first, so it's probably gonna go um, in the center. And I make my skeletal structure by attaching all the other atoms with single bonds. I've used up two, four, six electrons to do that. So I've used up six electrons to do that. That means that I have 20 electrons left. So let's see how I can arrange those 20 electrons to give every atom an octet. We're going to start with our terminal atoms. We're going to give the oxygens 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I've used up 18 to give all of the oxygens their octet. Now I need two more here, 20. And so I can put the last two on the central atom and get 20 electrons. Now in this last example, this structure, everything that needs an octet has an octet. But we're gonna take a look at this structure one last time and this is where formal charges kind of matter with the structure. So I'm gonna redraw this structure and I'm gonna calculate the formal charges for each of the atoms and I'm gonna see if I can reduce it. Now it doesn't mean that this structure is wrong, it just means that there are better structures for it. So let's start with the oxygen. The formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons minus the number of bonds that are touching it and uh, the lone pair electrons. So oxygen has six valence electrons and in terms of lone pairs, you're gonna count each dot one, two, three, four, five, six. And the number of bonds that are touching this oxygen is one. So that means the formal charge here is six minus six minus one is negative one. Now since all of the oxygens look the same, they all have one bond and three lone pairs around it, they'll all have a negative one charge. Let's take a look at the phosphorus. Phosphorus on the other hand is in group 15, so its formal charge will be this. Remember, it's the number of valence electrons, so that's five, minus the number of lone pair electrons that are touching it, one, two, minus the number of bonds, one, two, three. And so that will give it a formal charge of zero, okay? So in this structure, you can see that there are formal charges on the oxygen, a negative one, and a zero on the phosphorus. Now, is there a way to arrange this so that, there's, that there are better formal charges? We can reduce the formal charge in the oxygen by, rem by moving an electron pair in between the oxygen and the phosphorus. But when we do that, we'll put a negative formal charge on the phosphorus. And if you're gonna put negative formal charges anywhere, you're gonna put them on the most electronegative oxygen. So this structure turns out to be the best structure. But this will be an example of when formal charges kind of come into play. So if you have structures where the formal charges are not all zero, then you might want to see if there's a better structure. In this case, we don't have a better structure. All right, I hope you found this video helpful and have a quality day.